Hey, what's up everybody? Tim here from Everyday Tactical Vids and one of the items we're going to be looking at today, which is this guy here, Blackbird SK5. So I've been saving this for this particular outing. I just wanted to test it out. Um, I've been just, you know, checking it out at home and examining it full flat grind on this. Um, just a really, really nice blade um, and very comfortable, I'll tell you that. Uh, I'm trying to think where I heard this, but the, uh, the guy who designed this basically said, I want to make a handle that's just really comfortable for any hand size or, you know, shape. And I, I think right now this is one of the most comfortable knives I've ever, I've ever held. So we'll be using this. Here's a look at the SK5 and let's uh, talk through some of the details. Obviously it's a fixed blade. Your Rockwell hardness is between 58 and 60. This is what they call the mirror finish. They also have it in a uh, black finish so you can get it so it's non-reflective, a lot, lot more subtle. Your blade length is 5 inches, which is 12.7 centimeters. Your overall length is 10 inches, 25.4 centimeters. Your blade material is 154 cm, and it does come with a uh, nylon molly compatible sheath. And let's show that to you now. Here's a look at your sheath. Uh, a couple things to note. It does have a belt loop here, so you can just run your belt, loop, belt through that. And it is stitched, so there's no hook and loop or anything. Your belt's just going to go through there. On the back, you do have this long piece of uh, webbing and that's you can run that through just to get it out of the way or you can also attach this to uh, to Ma uh, molly you know vest lbv something like that uh, on the front there are two straps there so one here and one here so you could put another pouch or something on the front uh, a lot of sheaths like this will come with an extra pouch to put a sharpener or a fire stealer in, in uh, but that's not the case with this it is very streamlined which i i do like that about it the other thing i'll mention real quick is that this is your only point of retention the snap so there's nothing inside the uh, sheath you know that it's not going to click into place there's nothing holding it other than that snap so just make sure you snap that uh, when you put the knife away so that you're not you know walking through the woods and accidentally have it fall out on you i do want to mention just a few things here uh, there's a choil there and a lot of people think a choil is really built for your you know getting your finger up there close to the blade but it's really just so you can sharpen a blade effectively all the way to the end of the cutting portion of the blade and so there's a tiny little choil there so that's nice you have a nice finger guard there and then there is a lanyard hole um, down at the end Nothing printed on this side of the knife. On the other side of the knife, down there at the base, it does say OKC-USA Blackbird SK-5. And here's a close-up of that right there on your knife. Here's what it looks like on my belt. And uh, very easy to unsnap and to remove your knife from the sheath. I do find it a little bit sometimes challenging with these Ontario knife uh, knives to get the, the snap secured up just by how tight the, uh, the retention is. But that's actually good because, you know, it, this thing is nice and snug. It's not like there's a lot of space between the snap and the knife. And that thing is definitely gonna be staying nice and firmly in place. All right, I got some very dry pine here. Let's start working with this a little bit and see how the SK-5 does. Some of this outer stuff off. So there's a look at some of these little curls from the SK-5. So let me show you something real quick. The bottom is what I did, um, these little curls on the bottom with the SK-5 and the top is what I did with the Topps Brothers of Bushcraft Fieldcraft knife. So you can see that Scandi grind versus the flat grind. I mean, it's not impossible um, to get curls, but this was this was pretty much no effort. And this took a lot, of, a lot more effort even just to keep those guys on the, uh, on the feather stick. So that's something just to be aware of when you're thinking about you know, checking out the different knives and different grinds on different knives. So here's another feather stick test. We've got the Topps Brothers of Bushcraft and to its left, the feather stick that it made and then the SK-5 and the feather stick it made. Um, this is a different type of wood. This is uh, probably, it looks like a, a birch or a maple. Pre pretty much equal, I would say, on the feather sticks between these two. Um, a little bit more of the curl on the, um, with the SK-5, but just want to make it clear that it does, you know, it can do that fine work and that, um, that feathering of wood this is uh, some of the wood that we batoned, and then with those sharper angles, it seems like it was easier to get feathers out of uh, for both these knives. Let's uh, test out the SK-5 to see how the spine works for with a uh, fire steel. So obviously, no problem whatsoever for that. In general, a knife that is this probably this thick I'm not gonna be using for a ton of batoning but I do want to show you uh, what it looks like to baton this is looks like uh, I think it's a maple 
and it's probably about an inch across and we got some that are probably an inch and a quarter as well so let's uh, let's do this a little bit and see how it works seems to do it just fine so there's some smaller pieces oh. there's another this one's a little bit bigger than an inch across so this is certainly Certainly not a chopper, but if you needed to baton some wood, you know, for whatever purposes. I think as long as it's not too big, probably good to go. I've been using the SK-5 for a bit here. I'm going to uh, put it through the paces a little bit more and see what I think of it. Uh, absolutely, the spine is great for a fire steel. I mean, it was like making fireworks basically off that large fire steel that I had with this. Um, so that's a plus. You saw that it was able to do some feather sticking nicely. Uh, batoning, effectively for smaller wood, I certainly wouldn't use it for larger, uh, larger wood, you know, uh, something a quarter inch as far as a knife. That's going to be a great batoner for something, uh, you know, for doing some more aggressive batoning. But this is, I'd use this for smaller batoning. I, I would say the, the major win of this thing right now is the handle. Just really comfortable in, you know, your regular grip, reverse grip, just nice to, uh, nice to hold. And actually, I do like the spear point. Um, I think there are advantages to having, you know, like a drop point and that Scandi grind, but uh, this, one of the major wins is, I gotta do it at an angle here, but basically where your hand is to where the tip of the knife is, it's not like it's off center. So basically from the center of the knife to the center of the tip, it's all in line. So when you're doing, you know, you're making a divot or something like that, you don't have to readjust the angle of your knife, it's just straight up and down. So that's, that's a plus for a a spear point knife like that. So I'm gonna test it out a bit more and uh, and use it and then I'll report back into you back at the studio. All right guys, so you saw the footage out there in the woods, but I wanted to keep on testing this knife. And so what I did was I took my SK-5 and last night I um, batoned, I don't know, probably for 15 minutes. I got a bunch of pieces of wood and then I literally timed it. It was about 37 minutes. All right, guys. So you saw. The... All right, guys. So you saw the footage out there in the woods of me testing out the SK5. I wanted to keep using it though, and to keep testing it. And so what I did uh, last night was I batoned for probably 10 minutes, got a bunch of wood, brought it inside, just put something on Netflix, and I timed it for 37 minutes. I was making uh, feather sticks. Just you know, working the knife, working the knife. And a couple things I'll tell you. First is that uh, my hand, I didn't have any real hot spots that entire time. I eventually did get a hot spot because I went outside after and uh, with my fire seal was working on starting a fire using those feather sticks. And just the amount, I mean, it was, it was damp, there was snow on the ground. I wasn't spending a lot of time, you know, prepping everything perfectly. I was just gonna go burn the wood for kicks. So I ended up using the fire steel quite a bit and I got a tiny bit of a hot spot from using the knife to strike the fire steel. But in 37 minutes of making feather sticks, no hot spots whatsoever. So as far as comfort, you know, I mentioned that before, this knife is definitely, it is one of the most comfortable knives I've used, um, probably period, as far as a, a fixed blade. A uh, couple things here. First is the full flat grind. Um, I do find that this thing bites in really quickly. Um, what I would say is that as you're using the knife to dig into the wood, you can't really slice the knife in and then maneuver it a ton uh, quickly. You have to do it very intentionally, very slowly. I find with like a saber grind or a scanty grind, as you're, as you're uh, you know, say working on a feather stick, just the way the grind works and how you can maneuver the knife, it's just, it's easier, I think, to make feather sticks with a saber grind or a scanty grind as opposed to the full flat grind. Um, but that said, I don't, That said, I was still able to make plenty of feather sticks. I spent almost 40 minutes doing it. So it certainly does the job and does the job well, but uh, the, the full flat grind, I just find it, um, I don't know if I wanna say it's more aggressive, but it does seem to really just wanna slice into the wood quickly as opposed to, I find with the saber grind or the scandy grind. 
I guess I would use the word, it still feels a little bit more maneuverable. Um, I said earlier on that, uh, you know, I think I heard a, a while ago that this handle was made to be really comfortable for any hand size, and I would say that's really the case. This thing is supremely comfortable. Uh, your thickness, that, that does concern some people when it comes to batoning, which I can understand. Uh, again, batoning is going to be kind of a secondary thing. And I think people test knives out and they baton, you know, logs like this around, which is fine for testing. But in your average situation, you're probably not going to be, be batoning something as huge as that. So I think this thing will hold up for, um, for general use and batoning. Um, if you're going to be doing a, a ton of processing wood, probably a saw or an axe, obviously, is going to be a better option. The sheath is... Very simple, it gets the job done. Let me just show you here quickly. It's very simple, it gets the job done. I like that it's it's minimalistic. It doesn't have a ton of bells and whistles. Certainly if you like this knife a lot, um, Hedgehog, Hedgehog Leatherworks is one of the companies that's really well known for making uh, custom leather sheaves, sheaths that uh, fit the, uh, the SK5. But overall, um, I have like, using this knife a lot. I'm still undecided on how much I'm gonna to commit to this knife as far as like, is this going to be uh, like my primary or my primary um, bushcraft or, yeah, but it's probably a bushcraft knife. But just think about that. I'm deciding if it's going to be, which means that it's in the running for that, which means that of all the knives I've used, this one's definitely uh, one of the top knives. So would I recommend it? Absolutely. Uh, nicely made knife. I know somebody who had an SK5 and had uh, one minor issue with it and so contacted Ontario. They immediately sent another one out to them. So yeah, I mean you, you got good a good company backing you up with a good quality knife and uh, this is the type of knife that if, if you buy it and you say, you know, is it worth investing in getting a nice Kydex sheath or a leather sheath? I definitely think it is because this is this will be one of those knives that should last you a very, very long time. Hopefully we'll be, you'll be passing it on to the next generation. So SK5, definitely a thumbs up from Everyday Tactical Vids. And uh, is it the ultimate survival knife? No, but I think it's a very good survival or bushcraft and leaning into being a survival knife as well. Put links down below if you want to pick one of these up. I just checked Amazon and both the um, the satin finish and the black finish are running around $100 right now, which the price has dropped over the past handful of years as uh, just when they're released, obviously they're going to be more expensive. But 100 bucks quite reasonable for this knife. Thanks as always for checking out the videos. I want to encourage you to like, share, and subscribe to Everyday Tactical Vids, and then check us out on all the social media outlets, Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, and Tumblr as well. Take care.